Howdy everybody, Bob Langston with the North Carolina Zoo, also known as Mr. Bob, your neighborhood naturalist. I'm out here today and you can hear off in the distance many of the folks in the neighborhood are taking care of their lawns and their yards and doing various outdoor work today. If you happen to be doing that today, tomorrow, anytime here in the next week or two, you're probably going to run into one of the guys I'm going to talk about today. This is a story, my friends, of two beetles. About a week or two ago, I was talking about Japanese beetles. And Japanese beetles, they're typically um, a pest to gardens, both uh, flowers as well as vegetables. They love to eat leaves. I'll do a quick refresher course, a little bit about the Japanese beetles as we go. Japanese beetles share a life cycle that is very similar to a native beetle, also a scarab beetle that I mentioned two weeks ago. These are the green June bugs or the green June beetles. As it just so happened two weeks ago when I was getting video footage of the Japanese beetles, the June beetles have not yet emerged from the ground. They're out now, so I've got some to show you here in just a few minutes. We'll introduce you as well. Now, as I mentioned, the two beetles share a very similar life cycle. As adults, they're out this time of the year, they're flying around and typically they're eating and their main job is mating and laying eggs. The uh, Both beetles will crawl down into the dirt, they'll lay eggs in the dirt. Once they lay those eggs, the eggs will hatch out and they'll live in the ground for about a year. They live as a grub worm. The uh, June bugs are a little bit bigger than the uh, Japanese beetles when they're grubs. I couldn't find any of the grubs to show you, but they do, uh, I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, they look kind of like your, your pinky finger. It's very, very pale and white, but that's they have the six legs on one end because they're insects. So as they live in the ground, they'll overwinter. Springtime rolls around, they'll get a little bit more aggressive, they'll fatten up, and by midsummer, this time of the year, they'll go ahead and emerge from the ground and fly around. We'll show you some Japanese beetles. They're in the process of mating so that they're pro probably going to be laying eggs here now within the next few days and on for the next couple of weeks. June bugs are out right now. They're typically real, uh, solitary. One of the main differences between the two is what they eat. Japanese beetles typically like to eat leaf material. June bugs prefer fruits and buds of emerging flowers. So we'll take a look at those guys. We'll get a little up close and personal, and I'll hopefully show you the tale of two beetles. Come on, let's go see. If you were not able to join me a few weeks ago, or you need a little refresher, these guys are Japanese beetles. Currently enjoying a meal on a crepe myrtle in my front yard. I'm willing to bet you've discovered them in your own yard and garden. They're currently in mating mode, and they'll crawl down into the soil and start laying eggs. We'll do so for about the next week or so. Originally found in Japan, it's believed they were brought to North America about 100 years ago in some shipments of flower bulbs. Now, none of the birds and mammals that are predators on beetles like these very much. Starlings, another non-native species, are one of the few that actually do eat them. And here we have the star of the show. This is a green June bug, sometimes referred to as a green June beetle. As you watch this one crawl around, he's also eating the crepe myrtle, where I found those nice Japanese beetles moments ago. As you look on the back of his, we'll call it a shell, it's actually the cover for his wings, He's green, but he has sort of like a dusty, semi-gloss kind of finish. Now on his underside, shiny and metallic. I have here several of the insects for a size comparison. On the left is a green June bug. On the right are two Japanese beetles, and in the center I put a nickel down there so you can get an idea of how everybody shapes up as far as size goes. The reason they're in the bags is the June bugs are extremely 
willing to take off and fly, and I wanted you to be able to see these guys. The bags themselves are little bitty uh, Ziploc bags, and they do have a little bit of air in there, so they're and they won't stay in there very long, just so you can get an idea of about how large they are, or small they are. You'll also notice that I call them scarab beetles, and one of the characteristics of scarab beetles are those little antenna that look kind of like Q-tips. They're a stalk with a little round structure on the end. Out of the bag and back out to the crepe myrtle in the front yard. This handsome beetle is much happier once he gets a chance to come on back out into the front yard. Get a good look at those antenna. I mentioned scarab beetles. They have a short, stalky antenna. It looks like it's a ball structure on the end. It can actually open up a little bit to look a little bit like a claw. Now, the June bugs typically prefer fruit to leaves. So they're going to be eating the little buds here that are going to be flowers at some point on this particular crepe myrtle. I have here two different uh, beetles in these bags. You can see on the right hand side I have uh, a green June bug and over here on the left hand side I have one of the Japanese beetles. You notice the Japanese beetle is rounder and their covering on their wings is much shinier. The June bugs are shinier on the underside, but they're much more dull on the uh, top side. You'll also notice that the June bug, even though it's larger, looks like it has sort of shoulders and it narrows down to a hip. It's not a round shell, it's a very, very different shape. I mentioned that the Japanese beetles are currently in mating mode and that after they do pair up they'll crawl down into the dirt and start to lay eggs. They don't lay them all at once and neither do the June bugs. One of the big differences is June bugs as a native species will actually lay more eggs than the Japanese beetles do. A June bug typically will lay between 50 to 75 eggs per season. They only have one mating session per season. The uh, Japanese beetles typically only lay between 30 to 50 eggs per season. Now, if you look, you'll see this nice sort of a yellowish, tannish, bronzish line that goes around the edge of the wing cover, too. Kind of an interesting color, makes them look real unique. Early on, I stated that even though these two beetles, June bugs and Japanese beetles, come from very different parts of the world, they share a similar life cycle. The adults that we're seeing here do their job. They'll crawl around, they'll eat, they'll feed, they'll gather nutrition so that they can mate and lay eggs. They'll crawl down, lay eggs in the soil, and then the adults die off. The eggs hatch and they become grubs growing over the course of the next year. And then next summer, those grubs will mature. The adults will come out and repeat this cycle. I mentioned predators as well. Predators are very, very important to this kind of life cycle. I refer to predators as environmental resistance factors. They're these items in the environment that keep these beetles from completely overrunning all of the plants on the planet. Crows and blue jays and raccoons and possums eat up all the June bugs. Now, June bugs lay more eggs, so they have the possibility of having more mature also have more predators, so chances are they won't. Japanese beetles lay fewer eggs, and the only reason we're not overrun by those guys is because those fewer eggs are eaten by fewer and fewer predators. Starlings are pretty much it. So two of our local beetles, both of them are scarab beetles, both of them have similar lifestyles, life cycles, excuse me, and uh, they actually occupy similar space. June bugs, Japanese beetles. With the North Carolina Zoo now being open, let me mention to you that uh, we do have some procedures you need to follow. We welcome you. Come down and see us at the park any old time. You will need to purchase your tickets in advance. We do have appointments for when you can come into the park and the number of people in the park is capped at a particular limit each day. So please look into that before you plan on coming. We welcome the chance to visit with you. We have virtual camps going on with our conservation, education, and science section, even as we speak. 
Visit our website for all kinds of details. You can find that at www.nczoo.org. nczoo.org. So join us on the web. Join us on Facebook with many of our posts, not just the Neighborhood Naturalist series, but many of our other adventures as well. Hopefully we'll see you in person before too much longer. So for the North Carolina Zoo, I'm Bob Langston. Mr. Bob, your Neighborhood Naturalist. Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you next time.